how many of us here believe that our name and your names are already written in heaven? Oh, this group is weaker than the 8 o'clock group. The 8 o'clock group, maybe 80% raised their hand and said, yes, I believe my name already in heaven. Even Tommy didn't believe that. Tommy, you still have a long way to go or something here. Today, I think the theme for us is to rejoice. Even though we still have a quite a few things to do, but I think we need to rejoice, especially today, it's the weekend of uh, the 4th of July. We rejoice because we did it. Those who in the war may be sitting there and sit back and say, boy, it took a lot of sacrifices. A lot of people died for us. The first reading today give us some insight because the church is like the mother. And the mother feeding, caring, fondling the child. And the best picture, if you could imagine that a child, a baby, right next to her bosom, next to her, like she feed, breastfeeding her. And in the world of that baby at that time is nothing but my mom and me. The church is like that, my brothers and sisters. When we come into this kind of church, it's like we go into our mother's womb again, to our mother's arms again, and let the mother to feed us, to protect us, to teach us how to live and how to say and how to speak right. And so in Isaiah today, God say, as the mother care and loved you, will I also love you. That's how beautiful it is. And I'm living in this country for almost 30 years now. Sometimes some I kind of like compare with my friends in Vietnam. I don't want to put Vietnam down, but my, my classmates, they all 50 years like me. And sometimes I'm standing next to them when I went back to Vietnam, a little bit taller. A little bit taller. Well, my skin is smoother. I look a little bit handsomer than those guys. But I remember all the things that you see here, not just actually I was born like this. Because I ate so much good stuff here in the United States. Yes? Cheese and wine and margarita sometimes. That helped me to be strong and beautiful. And so we need to give thanks to God for this country, especially those who give us so much. And of course, I can't take credit for what I have. It's all gifts from God. So today, let us give a round, a big round of applause to all the people who did something for us so that we can drive on the street, we can pray freely. Now I'm thinking about in my country back then, we have to have a permission to pray. But here in this country, you can do almost anything you want because you have that freedom that God has given us. Ukraine right now has to battle every day for their security, for their lives. And so let us give a big round of applause to give thanks to God for this country. The second thing that I wanted to point out today is from the second reading to Galatians. St. Paul said, may I never boast, but only boast in the cross of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? He satisfied what his life already. All the comfort that mommy and daddy and family and country gave him, maybe he said, I am so grateful and joyful for this. But to the next level of discipleship, Paul said, maybe only in suffering with Jesus, I even share my joy with him and with others. Only when we suffer physically ourselves, we be able to have some 
compassion and empathy with others. And I can't imagine those who struggle with terminal illness. You know, I have a friend right behind our church here. She almost 60 some years old now and working tirelessly her whole life. And suddenly the doctor gave her a bad news that you have a tumor, breast cancer. She didn't cry, her husband cried. And of course the whole family cried with her. Desperate news, my brothers and sisters. Nobody wants to hear that terminal illness or cancer. At the same time, a lot of patients with cancer, they live with that cancer long enough, they give thanks to God for that cancer. That's weird, right? Why? Because God gave them enough time to prepare for their own life. And sometimes because of that terminal illness, that illness pulls and draws all the family members together. It doesn't matter how divided they were before. It doesn't matter what's going on among the siblings before, but they've forgotten all that because of one person in the family need prayer and need care. And so maybe in that suffering, God is not absent in our suffering, but God is there for us. And we need to give God thanks, boast in the suffering of Christ. Give God thanks because through suffering, somebody gained some salvation as well. The third situation, and I encourage you to pray with me here. Jesus said to his disciples, don't rejoice because the spirit subjected to you. Don't rejoice because you can cast out demons but rejoice because your name is written in heaven. A lot of times when we do something here, we love to be recognized. We want to be known. We want to be famous. I remember when I was 12 years old, I wanted to become a saint. You know, 12 years old, you have an innocent mind and spirit. Become a saint because you want one day people worship you, yes? People remember you, and hopefully they will put a statue there, and they... And then one day when I get older, I still have that idea. I say, God, I want to become a saint, but one day when I become a saint, make sure I have a statue somewhere. And God said, no statue, Dad. How about the icon of my face? No icon, no picture. How about written on somewhere so people come in, they can remember me. No name tag. Do you still want to become a saint? Today, God wants us don't just seek for earthly recognition, but heavenly recognition. Don't just go out there and try to, to compete among ourselves so that who's bigger and greater. But remember, everything we do, everything, a little thing already recognized by God. The gospel today gives us a lot of we call disciple examination. We all are disciples of God. When Jesus called 72 disciples because it includes us in there, not just the 12 apostles, 72. Now, who are these disciples? They are called and chosen and sent by God. The harvest is abundant, but laborers are shortest. We live in a church today that we don't have enough people even going to church. You are the 72 right now, and you have a mission. You are called and chosen and sent at the end of the Mass. The Mass is ended. Go! I'm sending you like lambs among wolves. Go and go do what? Don't create more violence and divisions, but tell the people you see peace to you. We are peace deliverer. 
we deliver peace, not war, not violence. And if people don't receive our peace, don't worry. That peace will come back to you. God is the God of peace. And the third one I like to remember, remember or remind you, that we are not the host, but we are the guests. When we come to their house, eat what they serve us, drink what they give us, and stay with them. Don't hop around and don't make more attention to ourselves, but stay with them, be present with them. And the last one, and I like it, we are called to be healers, not leaders, not conquerors. Our names written in heaven. Let's go out there, allow God to walk through us and heal our country today. We are called not to be leaders, but to be healers. Jesus was not a leader. We love to lead with our experiences, with our sacrifices and all our excellence. But Jesus was a healer. He came to heal the sick. He came to cause sinners. And so today, let us examine ourselves. How am I doing with my faith, with all the comfort and blessings that God has given us? And can we go out there, deliver peace, be with people, come for the sake, pray with them, because our name already written in heaven. I reminded my people here sometimes that I said, I have already paid, not hourly, not yearly, but eternally. It depends on me, do I want to work or not? Because God loved us so much. God wants to see us again in heaven. Amen.